welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy, all the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. Thanks so much for listening. Today, we have an update about the wildfires in wine country. Plus, we're talking harassment in Hollywood, the World Cup embarrassment, and IKEA furniture for pets. Plus, much, much more, all in less than 10 minutes. I'm Erica Mandy. Today is Wednesday, October 11th. You ready? Let's do this. Huge wildfires are still destroying wine country in Northern California. One California lawmaker expects it to be the worst fire disaster in California history. Two of the largest fires are in Napa and Sonoma counties. And yes, these are those go-to spots for wine. There are pretty shocking before and after photos of neighborhoods and at least one prominent winery. I'll be posting links to those photos in today's show notes if you're interested. ABC News says the death toll is now up to at least 17, but people are still missing, so that number could still go higher. At least 2,000 buildings are now destroyed. 20,000 people have evacuated. The fire started Sunday night, and super strong winds meant the flames spread quickly. People did not have a lot of warning to get out. As for the wine industry... It's not good. Bloomberg reports at least four Napa Valley wineries are destroyed or damaged, and Sonoma County may have it even worse. Apparently, smoke can ruin any of the grapes that haven't been picked yet. One expert told Bloomberg smoke ruins an entire season. Fire can ruin three or four seasons. The report says it's too early to know the full effect. California's wine industry added $58 billion to the state economy last year. Things have gotten even worse for Hollywood hotshot Harvey Weinstein. Now, more big-time stars. We're talking A-listers like Angelina Jolie and Gwyneth Paltrow are speaking out against him. And not just to criticize him. The New York Times reports they, too, say they were sexually harassed when they were young. Paltrow says she was just 22 when Weinstein tried to get her into the bedroom of a hotel suite. She ultimately said no and later told her boyfriend at the time, Brad Pitt, who apparently confronted Weinstein about it. Angelina Jolie says a similar thing happened to her when she was young, and she chose not to work with him again. But wait, there's more. The New Yorker also came out with a report that at least three women say Weinstein actually raped them. Four others say he groped them or exposed himself to them. There's even a newly released audio recording from 2015 where he basically says he's used to groping women. And now People reports his wife is leaving him too. Remember, we're talking about a guy that was one of the most powerful men in Hollywood. He co-founded Miramax and is behind movies like Pulp Fiction. Weinstein's spokesperson told The New Yorker Weinstein denies the accusations. The statement also says he's going to counseling. One more thing. Former NFL player and actor Terry Crews says he too has been harassed, but by a different Hollywood exec. He's not saying who, but he says he was cornered and groped at a party last year. He says he's talking about it now to provide hope for others and to say he understands why it's often tough for women to speak up. More confusion now about the timeline of the Las Vegas shooting. Remember, first police had said a hotel security guard interrupted the shooting. Then they changed that and said the guard was shot several minutes before the mass shooting. Well, now there's another piece in all this that makes it a little bit more odd. MGM is saying they think the timeline police are putting out now may be wrong. MGM owns the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino, where the gunman fired out of a window. The LA Times says the hotel didn't clarify why they think the police timeline is wrong, but they may be facing a lawsuit. It's unclear if that has anything to do with it. So in the end, there are still a bunch of questions about what happened and when in the minutes before the mass shooting. But here's some good news for you. A hero from that night just got a big surprise. CBS News says Taylor Winston was the guy who stuck around all the chaos, loaded up strangers who were hurt onto the bed of his pickup truck, and drove them all to the hospital before ambulances had even gotten there. So a dealership in Arizona saw his story and wanted to give back. They surprised him with a free pickup truck. Winston says he plans to sell his other truck and donate proceeds to the victims. Um, that didn't go well. The U.S. men's soccer team just lost their chance at the World Cup. CNN says this is the first time the U.S. men's team hasn't qualified for the World Cup since 1986. ESPN calls it the most embarrassing performance in U.S. sports history. The team lost yesterday, 2-1, to to Trinidad and Tobago. And by the way, Trinidad hasn't won any of its last nine matches. The World Cup is in Russia next summer. 
And fun fact, Business Insider says Fox and ESPN had a bidding war for the English broadcast rights to the World Cup in 2018 and 2022. Fox apparently ended up paying 400 mil to win the rights. But now it looks like it's not nearly as valuable. The NFL is saying, so about that kneeling thing during the national anthem, don't do that anymore. It's not set in stone yet, but NBC Sports says the league is now considering a change in the rules, and they may want to start requiring players to stand during the national anthem. The NFL commissioner, Roger Goodell, even sent a letter to all the team's owners saying support a plan to, quote, move past this controversy by making sure players stand. Keep in mind, this is a really different take than Goodell took just a few weeks ago when he and many team owners said players do have the right to kneel and protest during the national anthem. All right, other things people may be talking about today, the BET Hip Hop Awards. DJ Khaled hosted the award show last night, and Kendrick Lamar took home Album of the Year. Also getting a lot of buzz, rapper Eminem's four-minute freestyle video, where he goes after President Trump and doesn't hold back. Billboard has the full list of winners and that video of Eminem. If you want to see it, it'll be in today's show notes. Human-machine interaction. It's just one of the things Alibaba is investing in big time. If you don't know Alibaba, it's basically like the Amazon of Asia. The company now says it will invest $15 billion over the next three years into a global research and development program. TechCrunch says research labs will be in several countries, including China and the U.S., and they'll be working on things like artificial intelligence and quantum computing and, you know, tech of the future. You guys, Ikea has a new furniture line just for pets. Think a plush dog bed and a fancy scratching mat. Mashable says the new line of furniture for pets is called Lervig. It means hairy or shaggy in Swedish. Get ready to get your guessing game on. It could mean some big bucks. If you correctly guess Oreo's newest mystery cookie flavor, you could win up to 50 grand or some other smaller prizes. Time reports the Oreo Mystery Flavor Contest is open until the end of November. You can guess one time every day until then. So far, guesses seem to be pointing towards something fruity and sugary, like Fruity Pebbles. And that's it. You are all caught up for your Wednesday. Check out thenewsworthy.com if you want to dive deeper into any of the stories we talked about today. Just look for today's show notes and you'll see all the links right there. Make sure you're subscribed wherever you listen so you don't miss an episode. And with that, have a great day. I'll be back with more news tomorrow.